where do we begin? Oh my god! Welcome everyone to this episode of the Chief C Critics Podcast, where we are doing our pilot season, this time covering Friday the 13th, the series. I'm checking the navigation here, Crimson. Uh, where the fuck did you fly me through? <laughs> uh, to the 80s. <laughs> Back in time. To uh, Chicago. Yeah, is that the concept going on? Do we fly to these destinations to view them? <laughs> I guess that's the canon now. There you go. Well, a decade, decades, I remember Ryder did everything about time travel machine, so. That's true. I, I did do that. <laughs> so maybe we're in the jet from uh, Adam Project that goes through time. Yeah. There you go. Not, not Project Almanac? Didn't like that? <laughs> well, that that's not a jet or a plane for a pilot. This is a weird. This is a weird freighter we're running here. We got a DeLorean back there. We got a Tie Fighter hooked up to the end. <laughs> yeah, we got an Xbox 360, which is the we got Serenity somewhere in the center. <laughs> With me today, we uh, have... hello everybody. I am uh, one of your hosts, Kiki Writer. I'm Crimson Arun, and I'm Sprinks. And hey, you look up Cheapsy Critics somewhere, anywhere, probably not the obituaries. Thankfully, um, you'll find us on like Twitter, uh, blah, 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 Facebook. I almost said Xbox. That's funny. You could look us up on Xbox, probably Microsoft Edge. You'll find us. Um, uh, da, 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 Instagram, Letterbox. Uh, we have visual sites on YouTube and Rumble for PNG tubers and a slideshow we do. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, check there for updates. Might have some. Oh, and TikTok. That was the other one. TikTok. Can't forget about the tickety talkity. No, because a lot of people love the TikTok. Yeah. So, yeah, as mentioned, Friday the 13th, the series from 1987. Uh, pretty old. Is that the oldest show we've covered so far? Um, oldest the show? Oldest show? show. Probably. Yeah. But I would, uh, with the decade decade it's Yeah, yeah we've got older movies. Yeah. <laughs> nothing right now is being Wizard of Oz. Um, but show, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with some facts first, kind of mirroring the, uh, oh, was... last episode. Uh, last episode? Yeah. The last episode of the podcast. Yeah. Not last episode of Friday the 13th, the series. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you got me confused there because we didn't watch that. At least I didn't. Uh, but I do. No, I don't have a fact. You're already talking about All your right, history. Go into facts. Yes, we're, we're going into facts. So there was three seasons of this show, uh, 72 episodes in total. And season three got canceled mid-recording. So they only got 20 episodes instead of 26 like they were planning. Uh, I was looking for a budget, and there's an estimated budget per episode of a below half a million per episode. So that is the closest budget I could find. Uh, oh, there was, yeah, so yeah, below half a million. Oh, this is an expensive show for the 80s, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Or they used it all in those fire effects. <laughs> Good hey. to see. Hey, <laughs> we're not covering yet. Come on, <laughs> the great fire. Uh, this show was planned to have an ending at five seasons, so they didn't get to finish their, their plans through it. They had an idea for the final object being a hockey mask. Uh, but that didn't get to happen. Ooh. Yeah, that was going to be the final object to retrieve. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> Is this one of the instances where they could use the name, but nothing of the likeness of the movies? Uh, they could. They chose not to. Uh, they wanted to. They wanted it to be isolated. But they did have the rights to incorporate it. Uh, so the, the connection the would have been the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The entire show doesn't really connect to the movies whatsoever, other by name. Um, no characters cross over, nothing like that. They don't go to Crystal Lake or. Nope. No locations. Just, just the name. No Coolsville, huh? No. Hey, I think Coosville sucks. <laughs> Don't take that out of the line. Uh, so Uncle Lewis, his last name was Vendredi, uh, which is French for Friday. Well, got some intentions with the names. Okay. 
And the only thing I could find specific to the pilot in terms of facts was this is the only episode where the item they hunt is something they sold. Everything else, uh, Uncle Lewis sold. Oh, uh, did they weird. sell at the store? Oh, they did. I see. They what, don't go for they any. They don't go for items. Oh, uh, the doll uh, is the only. That's an encompassing item. show, like big <laughs> objective <laughs> situation. <laughs> that's a fucking problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they just go for Uncle Lewis's uh, book of sold items. They don't go for In the all stuff three they seasons. Just the doll. That's the only item they sold that they get back. So I found that very amusing when looking at facts. Yikes. I can't believe how, yeah. I can't believe I have to judge this show hey. in isolation because of that. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Episode only. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun with that. I'm glad I planted the seed for you. And the, I could strangle you through the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, last fact I have here, fact ish, is uh, it was. A controversial show when it came out. It was seen to be extremely violent. And uh, people wanted it removed from television because of how violent it was. Did you see that fire, man? Yeah, (laughs) of course. Of course it needs to be removed. Who would want to see that? (laughs) Who would have wished it on anybody? I think in the 80s. Crazy how time works. What other shows were around that were violent? Only thing that comes to my mind is family sitcoms, but I can't... Yeah, now, t- to be fair, I, I kind of get it. The doll uh, kills somebody in a coma, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the jump rope around here. the neck, was that's pretty violent. Yeah, the, levels. The, where I found the facts listed a couple examples of other shows that were quote-unquote violent, which was Freddy's Nightmare, 1988, and War of the Worlds, 1988. I didn't know those were shows. There you go. End of the facts section into histories. Starting with Ryder. All right. Friday the 13th. Uh, love the movie. Love the game. Um, I didn't know what the fuck this was until it was put on my plate to, to watch for the podcast. So uh, there you go. This is my history. <laughs> All right. Sprinks, you're up. Uh, boy, do I do a whole Friday the 13th? History? Uh, sure. Uh, oh. Hey, some of the movies are cool, I guess. Uh, Jason Voorhees, pretty cool. I think, for me, he's right under Michael Myers. Uh, and Michael Myers is, like, probably number one horror icon for me, I think. Um, this is my second time watching it, because Crimson's shown me it before, for the first time. And yeah. the game. We played a lot of the game when the game kind of first came out. Uh, haven't touched it in a while. I don't know if it's dead. Yeah, there was a whole thing with the servers. I don't know. Okay, let let me rephrase. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know if it's dead. I mean, I don't know if it's playable. Yeah. All right. I shall go next. Uh, I have seen one Friday the 13th movie, and it was the 2009 reboot. Not a big fan of it. Gross. Played the games. (laughs) I've seen the pilot to this three times. My initial viewing, the one I showed Sprinks in Sinister, and then for the podcast. And I've seen episode two, but I've not seen the whole show. And I own the entire series uh, physically. <laughs> I just haven't gotten to it. The wow, reason it came to my attention was Warehouse 13 is one of my favorite shows. And I was looking up shows that would be a good replacement. And uh, a lot of people recommended this show. So... Uh, it's funny. It's funny you bring that up. One of my one of my comments uh, when taking notes for this was, "This is just a worse version of Warehouse 13." <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> I'm glad you you saw the connections. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and do I have anything else? I think that is it for my history. And we'll just jump right into the coverage of it. We are doing a three act structure. It's only 45 minutes, so I tried to keep the axe within 15 minutes, so it's, I'm a little off, but it's all right. Act one is from the beginning to when Ryan finds the door in the basement. And this is when... Not when he uh, opens it, just when he finds it. When, oh, Mickey, okay. uh, when Mickey and Ryan are, are exploring the house later on? Yeah, when they're exploring the properties. 
Um, uh, it's close to 15 minutes, so that's that's why that's it stops at the door. Uh, and uh, popcorn within the act, whoever has a point, jump in. I don't have to name name call, but I will start off with uh, Sprinks other than that. Oh boy! <laughs> okay, I was just seeing my notes. I see where the act is. Um, is one of the actors credited Roby? Like, is that it in the beginning credits, or is that a character's name? I read it as Robbie, but it's possible. Or Robbie. Could be Robbie. Robbie's a pretty normal name. But that's uh, it. I did not read any of the credits, so okay. It was I don't. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. I don't know yeah, if it's, it's the Robbie. main name, and then it just says Robbie, and then that. So I don't know. But then after that, it says like a name playing as character. So I don't know if that was just to list as the character name, which if it is, I don't know what Robbie is in this thing, or if that's literally the credit of the actor and they didn't give a last name. Or if that is their last name, didn't give a first name. Oh yeah, look at it. It says starring John D. LeMay, and then it goes to Robbie, and then it says and Chris Wiggins and Jack Harshak. So just whoever they are, they are a, Robbie. They are a starring character. I just don't know who. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It just stood Way out to go, me. Robbie. I guess. Not being recognized for being in this properly. We'll touch on a uh, decent set work for this little town. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna agree with it. I think the rain does a lot to help out with the the set look. Yeah, the nighttime really helps. Yeah. Not make it look yeah. like a a western little built village. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh-huh. I forgot to set a disclaimer at the beginning. We all watched this on a uh, lower quality uh, version. So So if we bring up... Yeah, so when writer complains, you can't see. Yeah. So even though I have it physically, I just watched the downgraded one with you guys to make it an even playing field. So disclaimer out there for any points that might be weird because it might be tied to what we watched. And, you know, we got an asterisk on our rating. <laughs> and speaking about weird, I'll have the first weird thing I'll touch on. Uh, sure. The lighting effects for the lightning were over the side of a right-hand side building when looking at the street. Should have been downward angled from above. Um, it really gives away that it's a lighting source off to the right. I, was, I'm okay was, with how frequent the lighting kept going off. I guess that's fine. But I feel like it should have been more top-down above than Far oh right. yeah, well, because it's because it's bottom up. Yeah, like when it's showing yeah, the street at okay. the beginning, you can tell the lights coming from the top of a building on the right hand side, and not like it's above enough, them. That issue comes. That, that issue continues when they're even in the antique shop. Funny enough. Oh, I didn't catch that. I just saw it as light outside. Yeah, there's some angles inside. from the there's some angles from the windows where it's clearly like a bottom up lighting. Well, they're. They're quick flashes. Are you guys saying where the light is or the direction the light's coming from? Like the idea that the lightning is creating a light source. It would come top down, even if it's quick flashes. Yeah, it's coming from the sky. It's not coming from rooftops, which is what they do. It's rooftops. Okay. I didn't really see a direction with the lighting. I just saw it as a, a flash. So, all right. I didn't focus too much on the lightning, other than uh, I, the tone that it set for scenes that it was present in. I guess which uh, uh, meshed well with the music as well. Yeah, no, I think the music definitely complemented the situation around and the world and the book. Uh, I think it's funny. Uh, it's very interesting to have to introduce us to the owner, be very begrudgingly let a letting a family into the. His shop, even though he's closed, uh, I find it dumb he didn't immediately just lock his shop. But <laughs> a grants, I I have a slight issue that the door is always unlocked, and it happens three times. My my issue my issue here is that like he, the first thing you do when you're closed is you lock the door, which is why I'm I'm surprised well, he didn't. 
it comes down to was he actually closed? Because at this point, he wanted to back out of his deal with the devil or demon, whatever. And was that just him saying he doesn't want anybody here, but he wasn't actually closed yet? Parents say he is the only one open on the street. I would say that he's supposed to be closed, but he still has his light and door unlocked. And that could just be on the fact that no one really visits throughout the day. So Especially this like, late. Yeah, so it's just sidetracked on him that anyone actually would come in. Yeah. Uh, my, 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 the parents state that like everyone on the street is closed. They just want to stay and then dry off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I guess just plays to him that he's so focused on in ending his mortality bent or whatever he has with the devil uh, that he's too sidetracked on that to, you know, go to the door, lock it, and close up. Yeah. And if he did, we wouldn't have an episode. That is true. Mm-hmm. Here we meet a uh, dysfunctional family. We know it's dysfunctional because they introduce it to us immediately through some very ham-fisted dialogue. <laughs> ham-fisted? What? Well, it was ham fisted. It all felt natural. <laughs> uh, I want old. this doll. She's not my mom. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> so that is sarcasm coming across. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, I wouldn't full on say it's ham fisted, but it's not the best. It's yeah. I, I think uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's uh, my my exact wording is heavy handed. So, uh, my question, and I don't know how fair this is for me to ask for Crimson, but it's yeah. towards the enhanced version that you have seen. Is <laughs> the store really this brown? <laughs> it it is pretty brown. Yeah, got okay. a lot of wooden objects. Walls are are brown. It it is dark. It's not as dark as what we saw, but it, it's pretty brown. It looks like an antique shop. A lot of antique yeah. shops have that look. Not. So it's not pleasing it, to it the eye, the but shop... it's, I guess it's accurate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're not going to see a bunch of shiny metallic, uh, brand new items. Well, not a furniture or anything. Best ridden. You mean more the walls and stuff like that, right? Spring? It just yeah, it just seemed it wasn't it wasn't to the level of like the Matrix where it's all like you know, color coded like green like overlay or like it wasn't brown overlay of being inside. But no, it wasn't it, the like environment that. of everything of the set around them being very brown and them still being in dark clothing themselves didn't make them stand out and kind of complement the background. So to me it was very dull. And I don't know if that's just because of the version we were watching that blended that all to a look or if they actually stood out more in the enhanced um because the only thing that really stood out to me is the doll because it's in a white dress. Yeah, um, I guess it would kind of be a personal thought on what standout means, because in, in the standard version, I guess the the physical copy, I I wouldn't say they're lost in in the browns, but you might interpret them as lost in the browns. So I don't know if it's improved for you or not. It's just I didn't see you know. There's no reds, blues, greens, yellows, pinks. There's not a purples, vibrant colors. Oranges. No. No, there's nothing vibrant. No. It's just very dull browns, some whites, some blacks. Yeah, it's, it's nighttime. It's at an antique shop. I think it, it fits. I mean, even the lighting inside to like light up the place, I don't think it was candlelight. It was some lamp. Old, old lamps. Yeah, old lamps. Yeah, but old even lantern. them just hitting gr- against the furniture and everything just made it more brown. It didn't make those spots yellow to me. Mm. I don't know. It it just goes into a set design situation, and I don't know if that's just used to make it look old. I mean, I think it's for set design and just um, setting. Yeah. I, I th- it definitely feels like an antique shop. <laughs> and that goes with the, the color schemes. Okay. Like, I can take away, I know exactly what this place smells like. Uh, yeah, I think we can all smell it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it's true. I guess I've just been uh, in far more variety of antique shops. And I have been in some like this. The ones I've been with you have been 
pretty clean to be, modern. To be the, the benefit of the antique shops that I know where you guys live, they're pretty unique. <laughs> This is dirty Chicago in the the, the eighties. <laughs> no clean white walls anywhere. Uh, is the dad neglectful? Hmm. Because he he'd rather buy her affection than actually be with her. Yeah, and also because he just completely ignores her and she runs off with the doll. And, it's a doll. And somebody, and somebody gets their neck cut out for it. So <laughs> at the beginning, I'm gonna say no. Overall, yes. Yeah, I think he's a little bit neglectful in the beginning, but I think they do a good job of him trying to, I guess, please his new wife, which would be his immediate concern. Yeah, and you comfort know? that the daughter just lost her mom. Uh, I will let you know right now. I think my biggest gripe with this episode is the six month time jump. Okay. Um, what, what's your gripe regarding it? Uh, the father still thinking the daughter needs to get over her mom. The uncle coming back after six months and says he like comes in here all the time, but he hasn't been here in six months or is the uncle's death. Uh, no investigation of the uncle's body. Uh, just know that he's missing. So they reach out. Um, a lot of things with the six months, uh, the door being unlocked for God knows who long, how long before Mickey arrives, um, or Ryan for that matter, if it was unlocked before him. Um, I assume Ryan unlocked it when he went inside. Yeah, that was pretty pretty safe assumption. Okay, just to me, the six month thing seems to have like a lot of way to think the situations around. I I think the biggest issue regarding it with me is uh jack i think that's the biggest damage with the the time skip because yeah he he would have shown up a lot earlier he would have heard about his best friend dying i mean yeah if it's uh, if he's you know oh i come and check in and let's see he gives gives things more things if the max is six months upon his last visit he only comes twice a year if that yeah so that's my big issue issue with the six months uh the dad still coddling her over the dead mom six months fine to me depending on how close she is with the mom I mean, that can be pretty devastating for a kid to me that you plays have... into the ne- negligence because the stepmom's still against the daughter well the issue is the oh. it's the issue is that the the dad is uh doesn't know how to parent i guess but that's fine my issue is that he remembers that his daughter happened to want this particular doll from this particular night where they accidentally walked in from a storm when he could have uh you know remembered literally anything else anywhere else so it's just kind of happy i think we're lucky that he ends up getting the doll from this place i'll say lucky he gets it back a little it wouldn't play negligence at all if he remembers after six months this is the one doll like he didn't get anything else for maybe he did get other things but the fact he came well, out of his yeah. way to get it after all that time. Well, we don't know if he drove by and saw the the sale or he, if he went there specifically for the doll. Uh, we just know he went in asking for the doll. So There is a little gray area to his intent of getting the doll. Was it just by chance he saw the sale or was he actively keeping an eye on the store? Don't know. I guess I have a question of clarification. The two guys in the garage working on the car. Yeah. Are they mechanics? Are they, who are they? What are they? Who knows? Are they trying to steal I, the I car? Don't know if their car broke down and they were repairing it. Yeah, I don't know if they were hijacking. But this I is the car know. that's in the in the uncle's garage, right? That Ryan gets in? No. No, 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 no. no. This is, uh, this is the, like, supposed, this is supposed to be down the street. Because she runs away, like, through, like, the back door or whatever. Okay, that's where I was confused because I thought she just went entered the door to the garage. No, she she ran out of the building. Okay, I guess that would have played more off to me if she went through the front door or was wet from the yeah. rain. They yeah, were. It, it, it was raining. <laughs> okay. uh, my issue with it was why she ran outside. 
Yeah, I don't know either. She just really she went out there just to kill those guys in terms of the script. <laughs> kill one of them. The other yeah. one was still alive. He was a witness. Yeah. So the doll uh. for gosh how many powers she has uh has very sharp hands. Just karate chops. Hey, porcelain's sharp if it's broken. But she wasn't oh, broken. She's not broken. So. Uh, supernatural cut you know i also really like the line where she says get back and i'm like how far are they going to go marry two steps <laughs> yeah i don't know it's mary's connection with this doll is interesting because we have to establish a certain level of mental connection with the item and the girl unless she was just a psychopath from the beginning Hmm. Good question. How, how much of it is an influence of the doll connecting with her, and how much of it is just Mary? Yeah, that's kind of unclear. Maybe a sixty forty. I mean, like I would expect uh, Mary to want to impart on something because obviously she's very dis- she's very distraught. Which could explain her obsession with this particular doll, but they don't really dive into why she got obsessed with the doll. Yeah. That was my issue with it. Was I couldn't tell how much of it is supernatural, uh, it, her influence on the doll, or it's just her. <laughs> like or the doll making a connection with her. Well, that's, that's a supernatural aspect yeah. of her. Because uh, I think that would help a lot, <laughs> knowing an answer to that. But there's there's no answer for that. If she took a uh, witnessing somebody getting killed very well for a normal person. <laughs> so is she a psychopath? Is it the doll? I don't know. We don't know how she's our. I'll, I'll never know. We don't know how her the, mom exactly died. Maybe the she witnessed is, kids, her mom die. The interesting thing is, is that kids are very very malleable uh, in terms of how they're like brain works so she might not have been a psychopath but she would be more easily accepting of death because of her mother and therefore might lend credence to like her more psychopathic behavior so i'll go with that it's if being, she, because, you, because it's a behavior being encouraged as well which doesn't help yeah to me it's a detail i don't know I don't know about yeah I don't I don't know about the detail but my best reading of it is is that uh it's possible that they formed a connection it's not they don't do they don't convey it like well enough for me to pick up what that connection is and I think if we picked up on what that connection was um that would probably be we'd probably be able to give it a more definitive answer okay. And uh, in regards to Uncle Lewis here, and he knows all these objects are cursed. He sees, he lets them in because it's raining. I, if I was him, I'd still lock them out because it's just rain. Yeah. Uh, but once he sees yeah. the kid playing with everything, I wouldn't leave them. Yeah, I would not be going upstairs. You know the deal you made for your immortality. That girl is not leaving with anything. Yeah. Uh, I think it just speaks to who Uncle Lewis is. Not really a kind and caring person. Uh, I mean, he was selling these objects off, so can't really be a good person, right? True. Definitely willingly killing people to keep to get immortality and riches. And I wouldn't really call his lifestyle lavish in terms of wealth. Yeah, he definitely got the short end of the stick. Yeah. Listen, you get you get the wealth once you're ten years into the deal, okay? <laughs> you don't get it right away. Uh, we can talk more character specific. Uh, what do you guys think of Mickey? She's uh, fine. I like Mickey. I hate her husband. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't it, understand it, her husband. Their first introduction was very weird. I I had tilted my head. I'm like. I wasn't know what it was trying to convey to me whether they love each other or if they're just kind of bickering to bicker. Uh, I think Mickey is quite reasonable for most of the time. 
Um, but yeah, I think she's I think she's okay. She's she's a fine protagonist. Yeah, I I like her. I think she's she's good here. Uh, and then there is Ryan, who is a he's a guy from he's the there. <laughs> he's fine. Yeah, uh, looked I've at his make... cousin's rear. You know, that was a weird comment. <laughs> Can we touch on that? That was really odd. I don't that know if changes that changes things. I don't even think that's just a time of the time this was made. That's kind of weird. Well, go ahead, talk on it. You you want to talk about? It. Well, yeah, you just like, oh, I thought your name was Michael. It's Michelle. Well, I guess that changes things. And then she like covers herself up, and he's looking at her. It's like, what the? What is this? He knows she's their cousins. Uh, evidently very distantly related because he does not give a <laughs> shit. Well, they didn't even know each other existed. Uh, uh, well, yeah, an yeah, immortal uncle could do that to a family. So. That's true. I'm, I'm not your uncle. <laughs> oh, he puts a mustache on. <laughs> yeah. That was very good. Uh, yeah, I'm interested to know yeah. if, the, if he's revealed to not be related to them at all. Um, further in the show, I don't know. Yeah, it's very weird. It's uncomfortable. Uh, it, it made me a little uncomfortable. Because then I got to go with, this is their first interaction meeting each other, so that's a thought on Ryan's mind. Well, that line, the, that changes things, I was okay with it, because that can be interpreted in different ways. Like, you can talk to a girl oh, differently than a guy. Yeah, uh, just the line itself. Her, it's looking at her butt is the issue. The yeah, line that's, itself that's is that's fine. One. And she yeah. covers the herself line... up. Yeah. Well, that that can just be her perceiving him, but the, the him yeah. looking at her butt while she goes downstairs that that's definitive. <laughs> that's the, a, the line weird. the line isn't the issue because the line could be interpreted as oh well this is the eighties I'm a man I'm clearly going to run the shop that sort of thing. Could be that, that would be or... that would be that would be a normal. Uh, sort of misogynistic perception in the 80s to have. Or you can look at it like, oh, I'm going to have fun uh, pranking you because he already did that once. Um, yeah. We don't really know his views on women to so what exactly that could mean. It could yeah. mean a, a plethora of things. What's yeah. not misinterpretable, though, is, again, the, the, the look at the ass. <laughs> the start of yes. one of our main characters is sexualizing his cousin. Wow. Yes. Certainly, it's setting a tone. <laughs> it indeed is. Also, I don't know why I really did this in my notes, but when Satan's like coming down the stairs and all these devices are going off, I just jotted them down for some reason. Like, funny enough, I'm like, ooh, the typewriter of Fringe, the radio from Signs, the piano from Ghost and Mr. Chicken. Interesting. Interesting. I just wrote down the cross. I do like the. It's cheesy, but I like the hoof marks in stairs. As I, the I, I like coming it. down. Oh, more of a centaur than a human figure. It's not Lucifer. Or, it's got the I goat legs. The, it's yeah. got the goat thing, the hooves that are imprinting on the wood as he goes down steps to join uh, Lewis in the basement. The deal is off. But those ghosts, huh? Those okay. cheeky ghosts. Those. Wow. That's some... That's, um... Ah, uh, that's... I don't know if that's... I don't think it's practical. It's not like Haunted Mansion at Disneyland with the, the mirror reflection of projections. I think that's just overlapped film. Probably. Probably. I I thought the ghost stuff looked pretty good, except when they're hurt, uh, around him while he's screaming. Same, them because they flying shrink. out of the room. Them flying out of the room looked really good to me. <laughs> but once they're overlaid him, it, it does not look great. When they overlay him, they shrink in size. And I think that's because the camera was too closer on him, so the overlapped in the footage, they would have been the same size as previously if used. Um, most likely. That was, that was a perspective Oops. off in the, exactly. the filming situation. 
Um, I find his the Lewis's B grade acting pretty funny. Uh, I can't see much of it with uh, the lighting in this particular version of the show, but it was funny to to listen to. B, how generous! <laughs> All right, you're, you're right. You're right. Let's 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 go down the grade to D here. Um, yeah, there, there, there we go. Yeah, it's C minus. <laughs> Yeah, the the yelling was really bad. And I I don't, I don't know how laugh, I would act, to be honest with you. I don't know how I would act uh pretending that there were floating objects beating up me, but uh I feel like I could do just a sn- a slight bit better. Just a just a I believe you. That's I've interesting. seen you act I've seen you act and I can't well. act. Yeah, you think so, you're a terrible hey, actor. So, I am terrible. This guy's terrible too. Yeah, 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 I agree. You, I, you can do better. I agree. I've seen you do better. <laughs> I guess that's our uh, first little lore on our own selves that Crimson's been in movies. I've I've drowned. Yeah, it's happened yeah. before. <laughs> uh, we've all well, hey, no, we talked about that at the very beginning. Remember, we made movies together. Oh yeah, that's true. That was in episode zero. We did <laughs> Sorry. Oops. <laughs> maybe maybe our, our first, own maybe lore, first lore drop oh. in the pilot. Long time ago. It's... Oops. Sorry. Um <laughs> Hey, I'll touch on uh the practical use of fire. Fine. Look good. The over effects of fire horrendous. Did uh did you see like there there was there was a scene where he's like dancing in the, the fucking elevator thing where and Rory it... goes down to Nolan's back cave. And a transitional he, use of fire goes yeah, across. The, yeah, that was that to me was that to me was the most egregious use. Of that it. was the floor disappearing, guys. Come on, absolutely oh, it not. Disappe- it just disappeared. <laughs> it disappeared without yeah, but, us showing the camera moving down till afterwards of the fire movement, well, which the, came from left to right. That was the fire exploding. The floor going away. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't grabbing onto anything though. No, no, he wasn't until doing. the next shot where he's holding the. No, sign. that that was just a terrible cut. Oh, yeah. he got Looney Tunes where he's up until he notices when gravity. Got Wiley Coyote is yeah. what he got. <laughs> Ooh, hey, thanks for the detail. Worse. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> also, this is funny. I've been debating whether or not this fall is better or worse than the one that we saw in Tomb Raider. Oof. What a comparison. Very different angles of falling. I know. And this one to me might be better. Because there's actual distance shown of the person falling. Oh, you didn't like the background falling? And Tomb Raider, she... Dude, Angelina Jolie, I touched on this. She is standing still with her arms in the air, waving back and forth with a green screen moving behind her. She's not falling whatsoever. This one, this oh, guy's probably thought, not falling you're... whatsoever, but there's actually depth. I thought you were talking about Jorah Mulman's fall, like, off the pyramid at the very, very end. Oh, no, that was, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 no. The one where she falls in the pit, and we said, like, because Entering she was falling, like, seven temple. seconds, she would have died or that whole fall. A thousand feet. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But that shot of okay. her just waving her arms with the green screen in the background? Um. No, I, I I still think the fire one worse because at least that one's funny bad. I I just didn't like anything about this one. But that, that this, this one wasn't subjective. funny bad. No, I I thought the Tomb Raider <laughs> one was funny bad. But <laughs> the Tomb Raider one's funny bad. I agree because she tries to be a badass and everything so serious and just the effects in the film in that make it comical. The, the effects are what let her down in that one. There's this nothing to me, for this one. <laughs> no, this to me, but however, this all fits. Nothing really stands out of like a different situation of what's going on, which is why I find this better because it's fitting more to everything. And I think the use of depth to make him look smaller so he's actually falling comes oh, across so like better. The, because, because we saw the horrible fire beforehand, it's better here. <laughs> yeah, and the ghosts coming out of attacking him and it's all uh, a that, cheese ball that, that, of a scene. That checks it. That checks out with your rule. Okay, yeah, okay, it's all a cheese ball of a scene. So it's like, okay, all incorporating as a cheese ball of a scene. Got it. The Tomb Raider thing is like all serious puzzle working, trying to get into the tomb, and then one little moment of like, what the hell's happening? Makes it really stand out. All right. Uh, more on Uncle Lewis. 
uh, reaching out for the cross. God burns his hand. What is he doing? It would have been funny He's if the cross been... spun upside down and laughed at him. <laughs> he sees all these floating possessed objects. I would think he knows his inventory and would know that cross is a cursed object. What is he doing? Is it? Is this after the vault is opened? Yeah, this is after the vault. Yeah, is yeah, and it burns uh, like blackens his hand. Uh, from what little I could see of it, the, his burned hand looked okay. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the that was that was good makeup, burned hand. Um. Uh, yeah, that, that that's he, he that was Lewis being dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Can he even trust the clothes he wears? Right. <laughs> Did I put if on he, underwear? Like, it would be dude. one thing if he did the Benny thing, which is he just pulls out a fucking necklace of like hundreds of different religious and he yeah. started oh, praying each mummy. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be that What's, would be something. What but, was the but, horror movie about jeans coming to life? Uh, Sister of the Traveling Pants. Nope. It was like zipper or something. I know there's an advertisement for it, but uh, I know that I mean there's there's advertisements of like Levi's for that are haunted jeans, which is funny. But uh, no, there was a movie about it. I can't remember. Hmm. It's on Shutter, I think maybe. But anyway, like if yeah. his pants just started like attacking him or something, it's like oh my clothes. Well, the, the, we can't we can't do that because then like clothes can become possessed objects. I think if oh, Satan's well, in the they? room, anything can become possessed or cursed or at at any given time. I'm not saying they can't, Crimson. I'm just saying his clothes that he's wearing can't be cursed because he's not, in theory, he's not dumb enough to wear <laughs> to wear cursed objects. Have yeah, you, I don't know what his whole plan was. <laughs> well, he, at this point, he turned down uh, the deal. But he's like, this he, t-shirt he, removes five years of my life every time I breathe, and he's like, well, I'm not. That doesn't matter. <laughs> The devil would like, dare him to do it. <laughs> I'm just saying, if he's immortal, anything that has like consequences to his life and that object, I feel like he'd be like, ah, eh, whatever, it doesn't affect me. Like he's immune. Sure, I'm sure he could have a headspace. I mean, if I was immortal, yeah, that wouldn't bother me. I'd probably not wear it still, but I could see someone doing it. That's got to be in like a cartoon or something. I'm like some neglectant idiot character it's like don't put on that necklace it'll choke you to death and he puts it on he goes yeah it's a little tight around the neck and takes it off (laughs) when you're a whore you you truck around a bit i get that we also don't know how his immortality functions whether it's true immortality vampiric immortality or if it's like resurrection you know elven immortality where he can still die just you know doesn't age yeah yeah i don't know doesn't last, so uh, we'll never know. Well, I took it as it's soon true. as he wanted to break the pact. It was just removed from him. <laughs> as soon as he wanted out, uh, the devil's like, cool. Yeah, you're him. out. <laughs> <laughs> At least I get to keep my cursed objects. I'll talk about uh, Mickey's hair. Very 80s. Her I think whole Mickey is just very 80s in general. Yeah, her everything. Yeah. The uh, the overly baggy pants, the uh, yeah, the overcoat, it all it all goes with the hair and everything. I mean, no, I wanted to say Cindy Lauper. No, Cindy Lauper didn't have hair like that. There's someone I'm trying to remember who had hair like that. Um, I, I'm picturing who you're talking about, but I'm not going to name it. It's not Olivia Newton-John. Ah, Tret. Uh, who's the God, uh, who's the girl who plays uh, the leader of the Flag Smashers? She always gets her hair oh. done in similar ways. Oh, years. gosh. <laughs> Why? Why are you bringing up fucking Winter Soldier two videos in a row? Yeah, twice. He's going to bring it up next week. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's talk about the Willow show. That's, there we go. <laughs> there we, go. We, can t- we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, sure. The reason I brought up the, fl- the Falcon Winter Soldier comparison is because I think she, that's when her hair is closer to this, she always has her hair in that like wild uh, curly Well, it's like a, it's a ponytail, but the ponytail isn't straight, so it's still a, a puff in the back. But it's so yeah. wide, it's just like still the same head. So. Crimson, did you say Solo? 
Yeah, she's yeah, she's, uh, she's solo. solo. More reason not like the movie. You know? Wow. Uh, I'm, I'd be very f- great to see something I like her in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she can act. I'm just yeah. I'm sure she's a, you know. It's just no. I'm not. I'm not against the actress. Okay. She or uh, you know, her acting's fine. Just the thing she's yeah. in, don't care for. Anyway, I can't see. remember who. Gosh, it's really on the tip of my tongue. Like who this lady remind her hair reminds me of. Why is Buffy going to get in my head? I was like Ghostbusters. Her style and Buffy. Um. No. Okay. <laughs> None that comes to mind, anyways. All right, just just checking. I'm running it. I'm throwing it out there. Yeah, it it's been, been a couple years since I've watched now. Buffy. Back when Springs used to live with me. Ali she short circuit doesn't have tidy. her like that. Same four games. No. Certainly not a Molly Greenwald. I I I don't know. Oh well. It's very oh, similar, well. but I will talk about the magic black cat that just spawns in the car with them. Oh, dude. It's scary as alien. I don't know about that. I, I won't get like o- the alien one. I won't get over that. The better. scariest scene in Alien is still the cat. Jonesy is the scariest scene <laughs> in that movie. Now it's not Jonesy uh, because it's not Tabby Cat, but no, this is actually the cat from uh, I can't remember the name, but Sabrina, the teenage witch, the one that talks to her. Oh, I, th- I thought it was the cat from The Matrix, since we talked about that earlier. Oh, the Deja Vu cat. Yeah. Or the Keith David Coraline cat, or any other black it's cat. Black cat. <laughs> Yeah, the list just keeps on. Going. Where's the voodoo dolls? Oh, the different episode. Voodoo doll representation is needed. <laughs> yeah. If you got black cats, you need voodoo dolls. Can you make a voodoo doll of a possessed doll? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so I make a voodoo doll of the doll in this. Sure. Why not? Uh, it depends on the magic system, I guess. Fuck it. <laughs> For I've never seen that itself. before. <laughs> Could you make a voodoo doll of a voodoo doll? Sure. Why not? All right. I'll, I'll move on. Like, how many can you be connected? I don't uh, yeah. know. Now, would the that doll be the questions. one in the pain? And would that pain, go, would it be like a domino effect, or would it stop as one because it's affecting the one? Don't know. Can the doll even feel pain? I don't know. Sure, you can't Are destroy the doll. sentient? I don't know. Yeah, it depends on uh, what they're in, I suppose. Well, let's see. Act one. I'm wrapping up on my notes for you guys. Uh, when Mickey enters the place and there's some elk heads on the wall, wonder if any are related to the Evil Dead cabin. <laughs> that was a good impression. Sorry, uh, uh, writer. That <laughs> one. Not for you're not there yet. Yeah, I've only seen the first one. I, yeah. Again, I uh, I think I brought it up in that. I think the movies just get better. Uh, I find it funny the whole. I think they make a joke about the no power thing. There's no power. She can't make a call. The uh, call joke. A little, I liked. I'm a little. I'm a little miffed though, because you could just go find a payphone. Because this is the '80s, and that is in fact a thing. Well, she doesn't have any money, which is why she wants to sell the place. So she doesn't even have a quarter. Is that? Is that what she? Yeah. Is that, she is gave that all her money to the taxi cab. <laughs> Hit it all for the fair. Yeah. Actually, she wasn't even trying to get here. She was trying to get somewhere else, but the taxi let her off because she couldn't afford it. <laughs> uh, well, look at this my place stop's no. two feet away from here. I'm uh, sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, I do like, even though it's very simple and it happens in a lot of stuff, that both Ryan and Mickey are pretty much polar opposites uh, in terms of the place, even though she flips him immediately. <laughs> He's very excited about owning a a, a business and it, it was excited a, it was, about the artifacts. And I she's like, was, sell, sell, sell. Yeah, I so, thought it was funny the hard cut they make, but I think that's actually... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe that's acting. They haven't even gone into the room yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anything else this act? Yes. Uh, but yeah. In case the phone joke wasn't clear, the one where she's like, oh, I got to call him. Ryan's answer is like, how loud can you yell? 
Oh, it's not no, the one I, I thought. You were I like that was pretty funny. Because uh, um, the candles around uh, are not bright enough to actually give the lighting that is all set lighting. AKA uh, oh yeah, I wrote artificial. that down for you. I wrote that down for you. Yeah, sorry uh, I didn't bring it up. Yeah. Uh, no, that's okay. Uh, now, real the real yeah. question is: Do you have more problem with these candles or more problem with the Castlevania candles? Back to back uh, again. See, yeah, it's different because <laughs> one's animated. And is not lighting lighting though? Yes, I'm gonna have to go with Castlevania because that's easier to fix. Is it though? That's animation. <laughs> it's harder to fix, I think. I mean, if they just then took again, away the artificial what... lighting in here, you couldn't see a thing. If it was just candlelight, you couldn't see anything. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, was, the only lights we see. Worry, it was more of a joke than, than it was anything. Yeah. Else. I know. I'm di- sorry. I, I took the answers. The, yeah. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I figured that you'd probably pick out Castlevania. Castlevania they can draw in light sources anywhere they want. Here. They well, only had some. I mean, if there's a million. Had a lamp. I mean, so, yeah. Are, well, hey, power's out. They can have a lantern if they can find one. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's a lantern in an antique shop. Yeah, I bet Ryan just makes a fire. <laughs> How about Ryan just lights her hair on fire? I'm sure that'll last a while. Oh, okay. That's a lot of hair. Why doesn't Ryan just light the vault on fire? Kill two birds. Why doesn't he just grab the C4 because, out of his car? Because they can't break the artifacts, right? Or they tell you at the end. That's true. They don't break. Anywho, um, last thing I have here was did they happen to investigate and find the uncle's body? No, he's still uh, they, he's still they said they were, he was cave, missing. Sadly. Okay, so yeah. he's been missing for six months is why he's, they reached out to the niece and nephew. It's kind of weird that no one's noticed the, uh, the giant hole in the wall that goes all the way down. <laughs> I don't think that's real. That, that that was a pit to hell, okay? That was not to the bottom floor. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Could be, yeah. It's a good interpretation. Well, I can tell you that building doesn't have a you know what? story basement. You know what? Crimson answers my question. No body was found because his whole physical presence went to hell. Yeah. Uh, if I was the devil, uh, I would take him. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it for what I got. Ryder, you got anything else? No, that's all. That's it for what I got. Jeez. All right, Act Two. <laughs> uh, entering the room to when the two are talking to Mary outside with the ambulance. Oh, with the ambulance. I know. Weird spot. Ooh, Weird spot, right. but that's where it ends. There's a lot that happens in this act. Uh, some it's where things we, kick we, off. We, we, he gets trapped in the in the vault. Yeah. Um, is there any? Is it uh? Is it the vault door that breaks the thing that's holding it open, or is it just supposed to turn that as supernatural? Poker. Fire poker it's bent. Why the yeah. weight of the door bent the, the fire poker? I don't uh, know if that's attributed uh, to supernatural or just. I'm gonna have to go door. supernatural. I'm going if with it's supernatural. the door bending it. If it's the door bending it, I have to go with Supernatural. It'd be one thing if, like, a mechanical vault was closing and that was the only thing sticking there. It might hold out longer, but it would still snap. Oh, so So you're more concerned about it bending instead of breaking? Uh, Yeah. I mean, it is metal. It shouldn't... It's not rubber. Even there's the one different kinds from. of metals. That there, there are more flexible metals. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't think the door. I didn't look. Yeah, I don't think the door is weight is large metals. enough. Yeah, I don't think the door's weight is large enough to to do that. But I was just curious. Yeah, is it pig iron? So uh, my assumption is that was supernatural. Uh, based off it inherently, I would say no. But the fact that the room's full of cursed items. And they have someone that they can trap. I can, I can uh, figure out that they have motive. <laughs> I, I guess. Went, but then they let her go, so I have no idea. Yeah, I went with supernatural because it seemed to be timed. Of convenience. It's right when you left the room. Yeah. Now I issue, don't know why they let her go then if uh, if they did that. I don't know. 
Nor do I. My issue with it is when the doors close, Mickey's not in pitch black. Well, that would have been a very enjoyable viewing scene. I know. Would have been saved if she had her flashlight in hand to show that there's at least a light source so artificially on her, even though if it's not the flashlight causing the light on her, you know, would have fixed it. The simple, they could have done the simple, easy thing that all horror shit does, which is she's trapped in there with her fucking flashlight. She sees something moving, and all we do is see shadows in the light. Yeah. Such an easy... It's a layup for horror, guys. Come on. But she didn't have her flashlight in hand, which means there's no light source in the vault. You don't know if there's not a skylight. There's no light source anything. in the vault. In a vault? There's no you light source know. in the vault. You will not move me on this point. We see it later when they're investigating the vault. There's no light source in the vault. Uh, you, you don't get to see the ceiling. <laughs> you can see a, He's messing with these bricks. Okay. Yeah, you can see the first half of the ceiling. Well, but uh, Notice how that isn't the whole ceiling. So That's true. There's still half that could be lit. You know what? You got me there. There could be a coal chute. Yeah. Oh no, I I don't find the lighting in that scene to be an issue because that's in everything. Uh, a, a room that would be pitch black that is dimly lit so we can actually see what's happening on screen. I'm not. I don't have a problem with that. That's that's common practice. I think it would just been solved if she had the flashlight which she was carrying earlier. I don't even know where the flashlight went. I don't know. Didn't they have it Maybe, going uh, down the stairs? I don't know. Did Ryan take it from her? I don't know. I honestly don't remember where it went. I feel like I remember her using it in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I know it's gone because she's banging on the door with both hands. Yeah. She is indeed banging at the door. Anyone want to touch on the cool Scooby-Doo contraption? It's hiding the book. It is very Scooby-Doo, isn't it? <laughs> it is true, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just wrote how convoluted that was. The, the, the convenience of it. But that was all I really had on it. Um, I'm picturing this old man having to kneel down and twist that every single time he wanted to get his book and then putting it back up there. <laughs> That's true. Also, it has holes in the thing. So you could look up and see the book through the grate. It's not very well hidden. Well, it's a ceiling vent. True. Yeah. And a lot, you know, a lot of things is why would anyone ever look up? That's yeah, played in that... so much. I cannot find the actor who played Louis Armstrong in the first episode of the show. I found one who plays him for the rest of the series. <laughs> I was trying to look it up because it's funny looked familiar. So. Uh, I've rewatched the scene. Uh, she does not have the light, but Ryan does. I don't know how he got it, but he has it. Weird. Yeah. Because even use of artificial lighting in there with the flashlight would have been functional for me. Well, you would have said it wouldn't have been enough to light the whole room up. Well, no, so, but you still had a light source to be able to see. You, you would have said the whole room would have been artificially lit and then have a natural flashlight. All right, even to go with that, the then, same problem. Even with that, she can't see the doll. Like with Ryder's setup, if she had the flashlight, heard something, move the flashlight to the doll, first off, would have been scarier. And secondly, would have proved that she could see it. Sure, I can agree with that. That is assuming there's absolutely no light source in there. I'm not convinced yet. <laughs> we don't get to see the whole room. I don't know if there's a, a moonlight source, because it, it is got a bluish hue that moonlight would uh, give. I guess I gotta watch more episodes to find out. That's true. This does seem the place where they're gonna be locking up all oh, the Oh Crimson, you got me. I'm hooked on a thought. Yeah. Ooh. Who knows? I don't. I haven't seen it. <laughs> okay, so she freaks up, runs out, she being Ryan spat. They got the Sorry, I was just catching myself up on the notes because I got sidetracked. It's a real shaggy move. 
trips, yeah, grabs the really... one lever, twists, thing falls down. Ryan goes, Jinkies! And they got the clue. That's I, feel like, I feel like we should have besmirched Scooby-Doo. Uh, Velma does that enough. Um... <laughs> Velma? Bad Velma. I've seen both. Even Mr. Incorporated. Yeah. Good Velma. That's, again, true. <laughs> I mean, Ryder really liked Velma and Mr. Incorporated. Well, uh, I definitely, maybe I a definitely little... Did. Yeah, it could have been both the character and a little on the eyes for him, so... <laughs> Oh, that is true. Yes, in, the, in, the... in the description, writer wanted us like all our names <laughs> saying we all agreed Velma best girl or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Well, you guys did agree. You just didn't want your just didn't want to sign your names on it. <laughs> did I agree? I don't know. I don't know yeah, about that. You, were, you, you were all cowards. It's fine. <laughs> did I agree? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You can be in denial as long as you want. <laughs> writer, but I'm a hex girl boy over here. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna cast a spell on you. But in uh, non Scooby Doo news, <laughs> uh, I have a point to make, hey. and uh, it's one I'm sure Sprinks wrote down as like I know that word, Demogorgon. Oh, the ruins of the Demogorgon, absolutely. I kn- I just know you so well. Picked my ear. <laughs> I know that. Uh, and that's my point. That, that that was a Sprinks point. Oh, great. <laughs> you heard the word and you're like, oh, Sprinks will like this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, Sprinks' favorite Sprinks. part of the episode. I don't know. We get, a, we get a quick jump of characterization when, uh, I'll, I guess I'll go. Uh, when um, Ryan and uh, Mickey spat over uh, the whether they were having a fire sale or not. And they win the argument, and they pretty much hard cut to them uh, having a big sale. Like everything must go. Yeah, uh, we get we get some quick characterization that Ryan is supposed to be a ladies' man, but he's horrible at getting women. Clearly flirts with anybody. He thinks he's a ladies' man. Yeah, he certainly thinks he's a ladies' man. Uh, but evidently, at the, by that point, uh, he and Michelle have grown used to each other. Mickey, Michelle. Yeah, over the one night. And then the dad is back. It's been uh, six months since the uh, that, right? Yes. Yeah, it's been yeah, that's where six the jump months was. since we've been in here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the line said by Mickey, that's right, he was our uncle, I think, to Jack, uh, is clearly ADR. She is not moving her mouth. Yep. Bingo. You know what really helps, though? It's fucking dark and I can't see them. So That's true. It helps. <laughs> uh, I had to kind of go back and see what the heck he's holding. He's holding a sword. Yeah, yeah he's holding a sword. Holding a sword. I couldn't really make it out. I'm like, what is he pointing at, though? Got it. Going full uh, apostate knight, I guess. Yeah. He's wearing, like, a monk robe or something. And to the, the uh, mysterious figure type look, and then just some some nice chill guy. Yeah, just walked right yeah. into the store. Uh, you yeah, know. not exactly B and E when the door is always unlocked. He could have the key. That's true, but they don't. They just show him opening the door. There's just no pretense. Also, why is he hooded and mysterious if he comes here to deliver stuff often? At that point, he's does he know he's dead, or does he find out when the kids die? He finds out. He doesn't know. Oh, then yeah, it's very weird. He's doing the whole mysterious look around. Like, and that's just could, for the audience. He could solve it with Lewis one line of dead? just being like, "The door was unlocked. He never leaves it unlocked." Which I guess damages earlier, but <laughs> we were boyhood friends. He had no reason to suspect anything different. Huh? So he yay. <laughs> Well, that was a game he played with them was was hide and seek. You know, Lewis would hide in the antique shop while he would hunt around in these robes looking for him. I'm slightly <laughs> lost. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> the okay. silence was deafening. 
You don't know. They're childhood yeah. friends. That, yeah. could, that could have been a game they did. Hide the Not cucumber? established at all. What, what, yeah. Hide the cucumber. Also, the guy working on the car earlier, it's been six months. Any Anything they don't touch on his death cover-up or... Investigation wrapped up. It yeah. is over. Hey, wow. maybe he they just, just, he just... He just died. They could Well, they could have <laughs> Kingsman's... Kingsman him. Just wrap up his head. He's fine. How dare you bring up that stupid device? That <laughs> That's not. Let's make it magic at that point. Oh, Come it's, on, it's pretty much magic. Ugh. <laughs> See, I'm talking about uh, the golden circle, the second one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, let me pr- be very clear here. Know what we're talking about. I want to be very clear. I'm not touching about the first movie. Second. People have seen them know what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. It's the same way I talk about John Wick. I always have to specify when I when I say something I don't like, it's after the first one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Still haven't seen the fourth one. Anyway. Um, I do like the line of, how do you know that comic books? Of all this How demonic, like the comic well, what's he reading? Hellboy. Let's give him all this hell knowledge. See, I'm not in the comics, so I wouldn't have an answer. I don't know too many demon comics you would be knowledgeable on in the '80s. Like, I don't know when Spawn came out. Hellboy. Uh, uh, well, it's the '80s. Everything was called like you know devil worship back in the day. So yeah, the Satanic Panic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think they made D&D comics. Probably not at that time. No. So, Jack Kammershack. Great name, by the way. Jack Kammershack. Certainly something. Yeah, I'm curious how much of a presence he has in the show going forward. I don't know if he's going to be in every episode. Or if Obviously, he's, just he's there every he's... once in a while. Yeah, obviously he's gonna take over on the Artie role. Uh, yes. Is he like the sending Cisco? out, sending them out? The guy in the chair. Cisco. Which Cisco are you referring to? I should refrain. I shouldn't answer that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, it, you were talking about earlier how we we have to guy in the chair verify who we're talking about, like Ned from Come Come. Fine, you got me. Damn, you got me. Cisco from The Flash. Oh, okay. Okay, go. all right. Now that's a better one. <laughs> I was, I was like, I was trying. I was making the comparisons to my Star Trek captain, and <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, there's no way he's talking about <laughs> Star Trek. Yeah. yeah, I for I forgot I forgot Cisco. Uh, I, I keep forgetting. Sorry, I just forgot his name was Cisco. <laughs> just a guy in a chair. Yeah, there you go. It works. And uh, they immediately sideline Jack in this because he's going to go see a medium for reasons we don't get to really know much of in this episode. Uh, that is true. He found bad stuff in this random folder he just randomly picked up off the table that no one else yeah. looked at yet. Also, Lewis yeah. was a big bookie for documenting every death. When was it sold? This day. Well, next day, this person died. In, it's like he kept I'm tabs. okay with that because... I'm okay with that because he's the one selling them uh, for the devil. Like that was part of his deal for immortality. He would want to keep track of the deaths he's causing. It's well, probably what led up to his guilt building up. Yeah, if it was one item at a time, I could make that's fine. But if he sold like three items one day, then has to keep track of who died the following day while also selling more items and just sounds exhausting. It would be a chore. That's for sure. It would be a chore. Um. We don't know about John Lewis's character to how much the deaths weighed on him other than the fact he was willing to die saying no to the devil. Yeah, like how much is surveillance work? So, how much is just like a power he already knows? Is it all through newspaper clippings? Or is that... So the fact that he has a folder and he has records and he was willing to die uh, saying no to the devil, I'm, I'm sure he's willing to put in the work for it. By the way, a little off, uh, later, when the mom is like, you bought the doll, or the stepmom is like, you bought the doll for her, you know, you, you just please her at all times. Well, kind of with the stepmom here. It's been six months. 
Oh yeah, yeah Irene's pretty good. I don't, I don't find much issue with Irene. Uh yeah, nor do I. I think they're the time where I think she's overstepping her bounds is in the first scene. I think here it's pretty reasonable that it's the same. This the issue's now been purveying for six months, so her being exhausted with it makes sense here. Also, kind of just like um, how it looks going in, like the hus the the dad went all the way how far probably not far at all because just you know all the way to the antique store got the doll from six months ago to pay back because that's one thing he knows she likes and in her viewpoint it's like wow you really just want to please her with anything she's brought up of wanting yeah um yeah i don't really know why irene's with him yeah i don't know either (laughs) Uh, i also i also don't know uh his never mind my, my thoughts gone you know what i'm with you i don't know what his thing is either <laughs> yeah i will say when she yeah, comes I... in at the tea party irene and I oh think sorry I clean up or, and then yeah. she says you know no and she's like i don't like that tone there was no tone she just said no yeah I don't. I I don't like that the father is forcing Irene to play the bad guy. Pretty much in that parental relationship. It's kind of what I was mm-hmm. getting. At. Sorry. Yeah. Then your stepmom having to take the parenting role from the parent. Yeah, not, I can easily be swayed. Kind. You know, just like you don't spend time with her, like right back at her. Then again, we don't really see the dad spending time with Mary. Spending money on her though. Yeah. He's a busy guy, okay? He had to get a babysitter and stuff. Yeah. He just lost his well, wife he... six months ago. What do you want from him? Oh, God. Yeah, he's gonna lose his wife again in like an hour. <laughs> oh no. He's spiraling another six months. <laughs> Matt has a rough time of it. Yeah. Uh that we could talk about the motive of the doll now. Because I have issues with this doll, other than the insane power that this doll possesses and doesn't utilize when it's so it many powers. To. Yeah. Uh, well, but take it away, Kermit. Yeah. So it has telekinesis and a pretty strong telekinesis. It's pretty, it's pretty minor power. All right, go on. Yeah. yeah. Well, just a wee little baby one. You know, it'd be weird if they could just pick up the doll and, you know, take it to a, an antique store without it fighting back or anything. That, that would be really outside their own possibilities. Um, but the way in which it tries to dispatch Irene with these skates, just, I don't see the point. It could have just pushed her down the stairs with the power it, it possesses. Uh, it could just slit her throat or something. I know it's set up as an accident, but it could have just force pushed her down the stairs. I'll, I'll, throw, I'll throw my little issue with the wrong scene. Irene would have noticed the fucking skate coming out of the room. Yeah, yeah I got the same thing. <laughs> the door was wide open. She, she has she tunnel vision. She in that direction, and it comes all the way to her to get behind her. And yeah. makes noise. And I'm just picturing the scene where she doesn't know the doll's possessed. And she's like, bring me the doll. And the girl brings her the doll and she backs up terrified. <laughs> and then the doll talks like, okay, so she's playing with the doll and she's still terrified. I'm just picturing that in a normal setting where a kid's playing with the doll, trying to give it to her. And she's like, stay away. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Cause the doll, if the doll was hissing at her, like making the noise, that would have been one thing. Like the idea that it, it, could, was be the, it could be the kid doing the sound too, though. Well, I guess thing, that's more. Right? Really, yeah. I can see. If, if, if Mary's making she noise. was, yeah. If she was, if Mary was talking while the doll was talking, that would have been, you know, the revelation. But it's still weird. I mean, it's weird that she, when confronts her, when Mary gets the doll again, and she's looking at her, the doll's head moves to look at Mary, but that's not commented on. I feel like that's a bigger thing, of it's moving its head on its own. That yeah, could be a ventriloquist doll. She might not know. She she's only seen the doll and glancing and grabbed it without really inspecting it. So, yes, I don't know if her first thought would be that's a possessed doll. Also, so 
I have two two things. One, I don't like the dad in a sense where his wife dies. He in six months mourns probably and grieves, remarries someone else, but then is continually bringing up to about his daughter hasn't moved on when he clearly has. So that's something I don't like. Um, it, again, everyone grieves differently. I know that, but still, as a father figure, to not like show strength in that way. So, um, secondly, is I'm trying to think where was my second point? I lost. Sorry, did my disease rub off of you? <laughs> lost. Oh yes. Oh, I... yes, 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 yes. It's a it's a editing technique. That's it. Um, when she puts the doll away in the closet, I, Irene, the stepmom, and then goes downstairs. It cuts to Mickey and Ryan in the car trying to figure out where they live. Yes. And then cuts immediately back to Irene walking upstairs and Mary getting the doll out of the closet. So without yeah. that inner cut, Irene walked downstairs, did one thing, and turned around and walked right back up. I, I knew you were going to bring this up, too. <laughs> I had it in my notes. Uh, yeah, we don't know the passage of time that we get. I, I doubt it's the little segment of, do you know where we're going? No. <laughs> uh, that it could have been 10 minutes, 30 minutes, for all we know. Could have, could have presumably she was doing something downstairs and heard Mary go up to the closet, and that's why she walked up the stairs as yeah. well. There's, there's a multitude of reasons. I guess so. happened, it plays but... off to me that Mary wouldn't wait. As soon as Irene was not in eyesight, she'd go get her doll. Definitely yeah, possible. It, yeah. It's true. But I don't know why Mary whole, would wait. Yeah. With the whole Well, I mean, you know, presumably Mary's smart enough to know if she'd get in real trouble if she's caught trying to get it out immediately. And she did. So she might She didn't yeah, even she did. check where Irene was. Like if she looked through the banister up top and saw like, oh she's at the bottom of the stairs, I'll wait. Until she's like in yeah, another I, room. I, I agree. The editing is a little odd, but I th I do think the, the the cut between Ryan and Michael helps, though it doesn't really fix the scene. Yeah, Ryan and Mickey. That's that's what I said. Oh, I heard Michael. You said Michael. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I I really like, like I said in the beginning, Michael. I think is probably the best character in this. He's pretty solid. Uh, when Jack gives them both an out, like, you guys can jump ship now, this isn't your business, and she's like, no, I'm in Michelle, it. There's a, kid, there's, a, there's a kid involved. Uh, it's a pr pretty good character trait of her. It's something I wouldn't have guessed with her introduction, because she seemed kind of more self-centered, but it was nice to add that layer to her. Yeah. Definitely acquiring a character trait that I appreciate. It's the it's the usual one that you most protagonists in stories will accumulate, which is oh well, I draw the line of kids, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also brought up the crimson. You touched on like the doll didn't fight back when it's going kind of thing. I think it just takes energy of its host kind of thing so it's like because of mary's hatred for stepmom and all that that's what it's feeding on to get stronger and i don't know if the death of her made it more which is where she gets these new powers at the playground yeah, there's just something to touch on earlier what when the doll's in the vault it also moves on its own without being connected to a host of any kind so it just seems inconsistent with the power dynamics you know what you got? Yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm yeah, I'd be willing to commit to that's how it goes because I don't I mean, think Mary hates the the neighbor that's watching over them. The doll yeah, certainly does. Though. No, no, no. I think because yeah. of the death of Irene, it just strengthened the evilness of the doll. Also, I'm gonna I keep calling it I doll. I think it's what is it, Vita, or something? Yeah, it's Vita. I, yeah, I wrote the name down doll. once, but I, I the doll works. It's, well, yeah, I mean, it killed the mechanic guy or whatever in the beginning, yeah. too. <laughs> um, but we didn't really see a power shift from that going forward. So I, I don't know. There was a bit of an awkward dialogue exchange that happened. Uh, Ryan asks 
Mickey if she found anything and says no and then immediately finds it right afterwards. Yeah. This is a bit awkward. A little bit. A little janky. Where was that? Uh, I think it's right before uh, I think it's right after it's either right before uh, the old man leaves uh, to go see the medium or oh, okay. right after okay Check. yeah in my notes it's pr- it's a scene that's after the doll offers to punish the stepmom for making things not fun gotcha yeah there's it's just a little bit awkward she's complaining and ryan asks her if she can't find anything she says she can't find anything uh, and then immediately finds it right after that's interesting she's going through receipts i think is that what she's going through yeah she's going through receipts like purchasable receipts for items yeah trying to track down the doll yeah, yeah. Uh, the address from the the doll purchase. Um, at thirty minutes twenty seconds, I have a inconsistency of the head on the doll doesn't match up to the position position in the falling shot. Where it is with Mary, I think it's in at the tea party bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, a close up of Mary, the doll is facing one way, and the further shot, the doll's head is completely different. Um, and then it cuts. It's either that to that, or it's the flip side, where it's far, close, heads change, and then far again. Well, they have the shot of Mary holding the doll to Irene, where the doll's facing Irene. And then it cuts to Mary holding Irene, or not holding Irene, (laughs) holding Vita, and Vita's facing Mary. And then it cuts back and forth. So, yeah, it is an inconsistency. And I say that because I have it up, and I was was double-checking it. Because I didn't catch it. <laughs> Where did this act end again? You say? Uh, at the ambulance. Oh, okay. where they talk to yeah, where they talk to Mary right outside the ambulance, yeah. right? Yeah. Or they try to talk to Mary. I should phrase it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, I'm just double checking uh, my notes. Yeah. How much I have? Because I'm looking pretty empty on Act Two. Let's see. I'm skimming through my notes. Uh, At the 31 minute 58 second mark, when Irene tumbles down the stairs, the last tumble from the stunt actor, I'm presuming not actually the actress of Irene, um, bumps the cameraman. That's funny. Uh, I was going to compliment the uh, the stunt person because they did a good job of the convincing fall. Yeah. Uh, They did good on that. And yeah, uh, either they bumped the cameraman or he moved out of the way. But there was some uh, camera. They edit like there. real quick. It's like half a second, but yeah, the shot moves, which is interesting to think about because I'm pretty sure this staircase wasn't a set. So the cameraman was like leaning up against the wall, giving the he stuff that close. Room on the stairs. Yeah, yeah. it's uh. That's zero budget filmmaking right there. But hey, if you yeah. got to have like the, a million, the screen less. and the director's chair and the lighting and the rig and everything in that entryway of the house, then yeah, maybe the camera had to be that close. Yeah. Uh, last calls for Act 2. Uh, look at my notes, nothing. My only note is uh, they, the reaction of Mickey and Ryan at the, for the doll hissing at them. So it's pretty much right smack dab in the middle of the end here. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll use that going into Act Three. Act Three, uh, ambulance to the end. Yeah, uh, think already you want to take off from uh, that point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I I something I liked. I just liked their reactions because at this point, M- Mickey has told uh, Ryan, Ryan the 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 reaction like, about about the doll moving. So him experiencing it the first time too, you know, he played the actor plays a good does a good job playing it. Reacting to the doll physically making a noise at them. Yeah, and he was uh pretty on board with the whole cursed item stuff to begin with, though. Uh it, it was an interesting reaction. 
Pro so, probably a mix of excitement and fear. Yeah. Seeing is still always believing, usually. Yeah. Thanks, Conductor. Um, <laughs> I They find out where she lives, and they get to the point of, like, this is where she is. They see Mary with the doll, and she goes, you know, I'm not, you know, you're not my I'm friend. I'm a friend. Yeah, I'm not your friend. Goes in the ambulance with her dad. And then they kind of chase after the ambulance. And they're like, oh, man, we just missed her. They know where she's going. It's an ambulance. It's going to the hospital. They know that. They don't go until the next day. There can be different hospitals. Uh, it's weird that they just don't follow the ambulance. Exactly. There's that. <laughs> My only situation is if visiting hours aren't open. However, it's a cursed doll that's already taken a life. I think it would be pretty big for them to just apprehend and get it. Yeah, so their negligence, in a way, gets Irene killed. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess they could have just ripped yeah, it out of actually, her hands yeah. in the yeah, yard. Yeah, no, you're right. But then everyone would attack them for stealing. Yeah, there's an ambulance home. present. Was there was there a police presence? No, but there was a lot of neighbors. Okay, there. yeah, that would have definitely caused a scene. So, I don't know. I I, I would have followed the ambulance for sure, but. Uh, I don't think there was an opportunity really to take it from her before then. I, I mean, still, so I think I would have liked to see them get to the hospital in some way and try to get it. Even if like a security guard's like visiting hours are over and they're like, oh man, when, when's it, you know, when's it open tomorrow? Because then I, I check when they do visit because their wardrobe changes. Uh, the clock behind the nurse is like about 930 in the morning. Okay. Funny enough, I just looked up the actress for uh, Irene. Uh, she is known for uh, her roles in Goosebumps and in Warehouse 13. Wonderful. Interesting. <laughs> huh. Well, I have to look up the Warehouse 13 thing. I'm usually good with faces. I didn't pick that yeah. up. She's in two episodes. I think the character she's playing is Carol Augustine is the name. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that, that clicks anything, name. but that's that's yeah. off of the IMDb page. Right. So, oh yeah, it's like thirty years later, yeah. uh, twenty years later. Question on Irene's death: Was she scared to death? That was implied based off the cardiac arrest. I yeah. thought she got suffocated. I, yeah, so did I. Smothered. I thought she got smothered, but they said it was a heart attack or some sort. So I yeah, guess she just was... got scared to death. Mixed feelings. That. I, uh, I thought she was gonna. I thought she was being choked out, and then they say, "Oh, she died of cardiac arrest." And I'm just like, "Well, there goes that idea." Yeah. <laughs> so my answer to your, to your question, Springs, is, uh, I guess technically she got scared to death because cardiac arrest. <laughs> okay. I found it so funny, like, like just kind of leaning back in my chair, and like, okay, what are we doing here? When she's literally just holding the doll. And going back and forth. She's holding it. She's not. She has strength. She's not pushing the doll away or anything. She's literally holding it to her head and rocking back and forth. The Classic. doll's just stronger was, than oh her. Okay. Oh. Classic horror. Oh. Is, yeah, I, I agree, Springs. It's just if I, I tend to laugh at that more because it's a very much a classic horror thing. Hey, this was super violent. This was scary. Okay. Uh, more scary than violent, we but just, okay. We we just live in a different time. Like Could you imagine action? living in a time where this is scary violence and all that? That's wasn't like that's crazy. What are like action shows in the eighties with guns? Aren't there far more violence? Like a uh, Riptide. Was it Riptide well, violence? Remember, yeah, but remember like in action shows in the eighties, like they all have that like Terminator Jeez. aesthetic where, it's, where everything's just sparking off, so it's not violent per se. It's more cartoony violence than the... yeah. Violence, violence. It's not a horror. Terminator violence. was a bad example. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I think people exploding and getting shot is more violent, more violent than someone holding a doll <laughs> and and passing away. It has some dark themes. That's that's yeah. why it's uh... the the statement was based off the series, so not just okay, the well. episode one. I don't know how violent the show as a whole gets. So. This well, might be very like that, tame. Hopefully, probably more. I don't know. 
I would I would think so. Also, it was followed up it, after she did die, and the dad's like, "Oh no, she's gone." And Mary in her chair going, ha 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 ha, and then <laughs> evil stare, and then ha 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 ha, it does it again. I'm like, Whoa. wow. Yeah, I can uh, I, I can totally see path. I can totally see the director going up to her like, okay, Mary, I I want you to laugh and then stare at her, and then go back to laughing. She's like, oh okay. I'll yeah. do exactly what you said there. Yeah, uh, I can also see the her her dad's just crazy for not noticing, even though he's distraught. Just, you know, the laughing of the daughter. Would have, yeah. His acting know. is horrible. He's not even oh, calling yeah. for a doctor. It was pretty dumb. There was no reason for him to go call for a doctor either. He's, He's just like, All right, I'm going to go talk to a doctor. It's happening again. <laughs> he, he sees she's dead and it isn't, doctor, doctor. No, he doesn't, no. <laughs> and those, oh, also, this bothered me. There was no alarms that went off when she was... No, yeah. no emergency. Well, then again, is well, that this is eighty-seven. The time? There's yeah. no alarms. No, there is. <laughs> <laughs> There's at least a panic yeah. button, but emergency button. The the bells were stopped being used in the sixties. Okay. <laughs> uh, poor dad. Yep. Yeah, poor dad. He, he he ignores his daughter. He loses his wives. And he'll be. What does he have for his daughter? <laughs> Still continues to ignore his daughter. Has a babysitter come over? <laughs> is it a babysitter or yeah. is it the neighbor? It's the neighbor. Yeah, but so Crimson, Crimson said babysitter, okay. so I'm just gonna go with babysitter. Yeah, like yeah. he didn't she, go she, out and hire someone or call. No, so. she's the neighbor babysitting the daughter. Okay. Also, detail uh, with that: she heard the the doll talking. The babysitter. Yeah, like she could clearly hear it. Irene couldn't hear a thing. Mm-hmm. Until it was too late. I do like how they sh- set up the the neighbor, though. She was outside with the ambulance, so she she was present uh, during the oh. Irene yes. stairs. And uh, it's just it's poor neighbor. Uh, we have two coverages again. There's a lot of back and forth between the Owl House and this. Apparently, a giraffe. Those freaking terrifying giraffes. Those monsters. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, laughing yeah. when that happened because I just watched Owl House before this. I'm like, wow, <laughs> a giraffe. That's awesome. Yeah, calling upon the powers of the jungle. I guess the neighbor had to roll a five or eight to get out of that. Was that the numbers in the in the movie? Well, I haven't seen Jumanji in a long time. Oh, yeah. It's five or eight. In the jungle, <laughs> you must wait until you roll a five or eight. Yeah, there you go. It's been a long time. Sorry, I'm a I'm a Jumanji fan. Original <laughs> Robin Williams Jumanji fan. I haven't seen the reboot video game ones. So... I want to watch the new reboot ones, but uh, I'm only for uh, uh, the actress who's who's in it. I don't remember her name. Karen Gillian. Oh, you, Karen Gillian. Amy Pond. Amelia yeah, that's... Pond. Amelia Pond. Well, hey, out of out of the two. Uh, what was it? The next level. Yeah, I saw the first one. And let me just say, I'm a big fan of Robin Williams, Jumanji, original. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. Uh, I like the fact that Ryan, the first thing he does is call the ambulance. Or yeah. he calls 911 when they oh, yeah. burst into the house to try and save the neighbor. Well, as soon as he sees his neighbor, yeah. He yeah. doesn't bust in the house and he's like, 911 immediately, so. Yeah, good, you know, good instincts. I like it. Yeah, I guess it's a nice little cover up of when they bust in and they're like, wow, where do we go? And Mickey literally looks at the down stairwell here. and go down here. She can't see a thing. There's not yeah. a single that, thing. She's moaning. That moon, that room resets, by the way, like impeccably. Oh, of the draft and the, yeah, everything. She's just there and everything moving back to the walls and. Well, uh, yeah, it's uh, Vita's telekinesis cleaning up yeah. after itself. Yeah, more powers. Yeah. I-, I don't know why, because it's not like the doll knew. It was an accident. The old lady just choked to death and cut her face up with records. Okay? Yeah. Also, did the with jump rope turn into 45s. a bow constrictor? Was it like making snake it, hisses? It, it, well, yeah. The jump yeah, that, I think that was the the doll. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Also, that's speed up. Yikes. Hilarious. <laughs> I yes. They, they should have just done more cutaways. Like, just different angles, like a shoulder movement or something. Like the branches in Evil Dead. You know, just, like, cuts to show the movement of everything, rather than that quick one to take. Uh, but, you, but you see, you see, Sprinks, Sam Raimi has talent. Ooh! <laughs> Wow. Zinner. Are you telling me whoever directed this didn't have talent? No, just not as much as Sam Raimi. It's not as much as Sam Raimi. <laughs> That's all he's saying. Uh, I did look at the director of this, and uh, I don't know the name, but they didn't really go on to do anything else. They they did some like Hallmark Christmas movies or something. That's about it. Okay, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. But... But in defense, is that a better way to go with your career than getting to Multiverse of Madness? Hmm. Um, you either die a hero or... Or you live long okay. enough to come to one. <laughs> See, the thing is, I, I don't... It's, okay. See, here's the thing about Marvel and Phase 4. They didn't... They casted directors like they did actors. Oh, boy. I opened a can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't blame Sam Raimi for Multiverse of Madness. I blame the writers and Eric oh, I, Marvel I, in general. <laughs> I kind of go with the writer too, because he did. Yeah. What was the other thing? He wrote? I mean, he was writing while they were filming. I know, but uh, he wrote something else that I didn't like. I can't remember. Yeah, the was it Captain Vision Marvel show? He wrote that. Oh, was it one of them? <laughs> oh, so. Anywho, he wrote one episode of Rick and Morty. <laughs> That's all I know about. I, I have. It's been a while since I've done my research on on him. I can't wait for his uh, X Men. Game it's gonna be yikes something yikes. <laughs> Anywho, Sprinks, I I caught something I figured you would really like. Ooh, uh, Mary goes on the merry go round. You know, I didn't piece that together. I like that. <laughs> I I actually <laughs> like I like that. That's good. What I don't like is that it's going three miles per hour and they're acting <laughs> and like it's, it's going like... 90. <laughs> it's yeah. so fast. Yeah, see, this is, this is an instance where a good director would have sped the footage up <laughs> just for, just for yeah. a shot. To show a power situation. <laughs> Rather than the lawn take, like, pull away. It's like, wow. It's, it's like the mind of a kid. You know, it's like far away. It's like, oh yeah, they're just having fun. But like the kid close up is like, it's going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, and then the the doll's also a pyrokinetic as well. Yeah, she can just spawn fire. Yeah. Also, can control the weather. Um, yeah, yeah. Which I immediately when that happened, I thought it was the nothing from Never Ending Story. Because that's the same <laughs> shot that happens of like just dark clouds rolling in. The clouds. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good comparison. But I'm like, yeah, gosh, and, uh, this doll has so many gifts, so many powers. It does. Yeah. Too bad I can't just run on its own or something. No. Too bad we can't just it, exercise the shit. I mean, can it. it conjure fire out of itself, or does it have to be another thing? Because the clown, first off, the clown's far away. It's just there to scare. It didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The, the doll's inconsistent with its power set. It it, just they, they re- the doll could have killed... Uh, Mikey and Ryan, if I wanted to, but it didn't. Mickey. Whatever. <laughs> I said Mikey, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Mickey. Cowabunga. You said Mikey. You said Michael at least once. And uh, did I say Mike? No, you did. I, I think you did. You I think Michael. I did. think you said Michael as right after Ryder was. You did it right after Ryder, which, which is why I, which I I apologized audibly after you said it. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. shoot! I I almost commented. I'm like, oh, what if I heard that wrong? So I stayed silent. <laughs> <laughs> what if I said that wrong? Uh, Stop reading the telegram, consistent. Ryan. Hmm. It's Michelle. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, what I, you guys at got the, points? At the, point sure. of, at the point of the, the spinning uh, to death. On the, the merry-go-round, I wrote down on my notes, Mary is a lost cause, guys. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. they just pushed her off? 
No, nah, Mary, Mary, Mary is just the lost cause in general. She was actively uh, she, participating she, in murders. And, 20 and, years of therapy, at least, as uh, Ryan said. Yeah. Lock her out of detention center. Just, just get her out of society. Lock her up. Get her some help. Maybe she'll they come get, back. They get the doll and everything magically goes back in order. I don't understand that either. Maybe Mary yeah, that's will be like... Complaint. Mary be like the guy from Friend or not Friend, uh, Leverage. At the end, he's like in the cell. He's back. Oh, I forget his name. Art. Well, it's it's Artie from where I was thirteen, but I don't remember the guy's name in Leverage. The airplane guy. Well, yeah, he's like in episode one, and like, ah, oh, we got him, and yeah, then he comes back later, and you're like, oh, they could do it with Mary. Uh, uh, Ryder's not that far yet. Sprakes. Oops. I have that to look forward to, I guess. Hey, but like, <laughs> what if Mary's like grown up and they don't recognize her? And they're like, oh my gosh, you know, it's you. Season three. Who knows? <laughs> and then Mary puts on a hockey mask and you're like, oh my gosh. And... <laughs> what a twist. Hey, that's writer's line. What a twist. There we go. Uh, I, I absolutely stole that line, so it's not mine. <laughs> I wonder how long um, it took to do the playground scene because of the weather change. Or do you think they implemented that because of like a, a filming issue? Like, um, like oh, It's a TV show, so I could definitely see them implementing it as a part of like just they had it scheduled for that particular time and they couldn't afford to move it. They're like, oh, we ran out of film. And it's like, oh, shoot. How often, you know, when can we get that? And it's like in two hours. Well, it's going to get dark by then. It's like, okay, well, we'll just put it in like... The doll's got weather powers. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, there was certainly some film manipulation going on with the, the lighting of, of it. My biggest complaint with lighting was the pink background that popped up several times at the playground that I didn't understand. I, I thought it was part of the YouTube version we saw, but I, I went back and looked. It's got the same weird pink hue. Oh, is that what you were checking? Yeah, I didn't know if that was yeah. actually it. That's horrible. I, uh, yeah, uh, I, that was not good. <laughs> no. No, no, it wasn't. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. I thought it was like a blur effect or like some kind of blur motion background thing. I, I, that was some sort of color manipulation in relation to the storm. Because once the storm goes... You can see the sky change colors, and that's not real. So there's they're doing something. Oh, you know what? I didn't catch it. Maybe because of the quality. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I didn't catch it. Just like, what if it's actually daytime and it's edited to look night? That's uh, that's what I'm pretty sure it is. You, you talking about uh, whether or not they timed it for a real weather? I was like, no. They, they, pretty they, sure they didn't. Okay. Oh. Yeah, they they manipulated. The lighting digitally <laughs> with a filter of some sort. Well, uh, okay then. <laughs> uh, I'm fun. I'm running out of notes here. I sure am. Two. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> English. Uh, Ryder, uh, how are yours looking? Uh, I am three. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I, I got a, I got like two things left on my notes. So all right, shoot them out. All right. Well, uh, the the they get the doll and everything just goes back in order. I hated that a lot. Uh, I think I already got that out. But to kind of get in explicitly is like, why didn't the doll just fight them? Because <laughs> Ryan doesn't have a bad bone in his body to be manipulated. So the power the doll has no power over Ryan. It, it just slashes throat like the other guys. It we could, know it can move but on. But it own. needs its host Mary in its presence. But when but Mickey on was own in the strangling with the, I don't, I don't know. No, no one knows. <laughs> That's the issue. Uh, the la the the last note I have is more of a comedy one. I'm like, this is a much worse version of Warehouse 13, and it makes me want to go back and rewatch Warehouse 13. You should. It's a great show. Yeah, so I've so that, I've heard, Crimson. So I've heard. That Not was like you spent years <laughs> trying to get me through it. <laughs> yeah, we, we spent a couple of years watching it. Uh, I wanted to pick Warehouse 13 as a pilot for, for this. No but, comparison. Uh, it's, well, no, just because uh, Springs, I haven't shown you it before. But it's an hour and a half long pilot. So Yikes! I, I 
and take it. Hey, that also. Hey, I had to get rid of something because mine was a two-parter pilot and was over, It was also very lengthy. So, yeah, don't worry. I got one of mine too. My one of mine was an hour and like 10, 20 minutes. Uh, so I, I I switched it out. Yeah, sorry, audience. We we adjusted for fairness. <laughs> we yeah. did unintentionally, but we all we all did. We were we were going for lower times, and I don't. I mean, I guess the very end with our quote we opened with was a funny hook because I, like I the, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's like, oh, let's see what happens next week. Yeah, the, oh the idea God. obviously, the, obviously, the idea being is that that's how they're going to figure out what's going on by reading the news, <laughs> which is pretty funny to think about it. Also, being that these items can't be destroyed for their curse, all that just means every Where single item's present out there. Yeah, where was that explicitly said, by the way? I, I, I know at the end. At the end when he's oh. in it. Yeah. That's it can't be destroyed. That's dumb. Uh I'd like to try I'd still like to try. <laughs> yeah, they could try. That would be cool. What if it's like a horcrux thing? It's like, oh, it has to be destroyed a certain way. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Jack's just uh, like you gotta, oh. a, you gotta make a deal with God, you know, and God uh, will bless them. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. How to have God try to bless a sword and see if I can whack it. <laughs> Angels fine. and demons. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, I would have, I would appreciate at least a few attempts because I would still make the attempt. I'm human after all. Yeah, don't put the blame on me. All right, uh, Sprinks, you were out. You said yeah. Yes. All right. And uh, writer said it's two. We made it through. Hey. Ooh, I made that run. We will jump into our ratings and summaries, starting with whichever one of you wants to go first, because I don't want to. That's not how this works. Aha, but I'm host. I get to say that. So who wants to go? Yeah, Spriggs, you're going first, because I went first. Uh, Sweet, I'll go there first. Go. All right. Sprinks, uh, hey, uh, my subjective, this is passable and fine. No way it would have hit a 10, because it didn't have Jason, or anything to do with Jason, or the Voorhees family, or... For that matter, not even a hockey or location, mask, or nothing. location, or anything connected that I saw to Friday Thirteenth. So automatic a nine or lower. Um, it's passable. It's fine. It's of its time. Um, it has me a little intrigued for other episodes to see what what happened. Uh, it's got corny and goofy stuff. Uh, so it's a six. Uh, mm-hmm. For objective, um, boy, uh, lighting issues. Um, Acting might be the strongest thing. Some some good acting, especially for Mickey, and I think Ryan's okay. Maybe what about Lewis? Strongest. Lewis is a great actor. Lewis is um <laughs> he, he I don't think I can credit him to saying he tried the best with what he had. I think he tried to get a paycheck with what he had. Um Jack's fine, Mary's fine, uh Irene's death stare, oh my gosh. Uh, the dad, kind of pitiful, whatever. Um, so yeah, Mickey's acting cool. Uh, candlelight, nope. Uh, fixes that they could have done, yep. Um, editing, actually editing, I think was fine. Very just kind of bare bones usage. Uh, camera work, uh, fine. Um, some good angles, like the rollerblade at Irene's feet was cool. Um, the shot of like zooming in on the playground to show where Mary was from like Mickey's perspective. Some good shots. Not bad. Um, story, uh, just all over the place. Like this doll, you know, about the doll and situation could have been better, could have been stronger. Um, the, the waiting till the next morning at the hospital really didn't like that with Mickey and Ryan, especially since they drove to get here. Um, the dad, not, grieving his own over the loss of his wife, but then moving on to get married, but then not doing the same for his daughter. Well, daughter not getting married, but to his daughter's like, hey, I moved on, showing an example of how to go through grief, but doesn't and just keeps coddling her with toys and gifts. And so with Irene on that part, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was kind of hard, not hard for me to judge of like where this is going. But I I have it at a four point five and it might move. I I think I just need okay. to think on it a little more. 
I think it's uh, Tomb Raider level because I believe you give that a four point five. Uh, yeah, because I'm not judging it for the fact of the low quality on YouTube. Mm. But okay. yeah, it might go lower. I don't know. I I, got, I I'll think more on it. But right now, I have it as a four point five. Okay. I shall go next. And the difficult part of rating this one for me is the time and uh, the fact that it's a TV show. I have not seen many shows from the 80s, and it's it's a hard point of comparison because a lot of excuses for shows today, a little bit earlier before the streaming stuff, so the early 2000s, 2010 stuff, is like, Okay, it's a little bit lower budget because it's a TV show, so you can be like, oh, the visuals look bad, but they're good for TV, you know? So I don't know how much of that is in play with an 80s TV show. Was this good CG for an 80s show? Is it bad? Just in line? I don't know. So I don't know. It's it's hard to judge it on the time it takes place. You have no comparatives. I, I'm, I'm very limited on the time. I, I've seen shows from the 70s, uh, I've not seen many on the 80s. Well, a live action ones. I've seen cartoons. So for visuals, I'm just going to be safe and say they make sense for the times. <laughs> I'm not going to damage it or give it a plus for that. It's just I'll, I'll be neutral with the visuals. Uh, the acting, I agree. Oh, this is for objective, by the way. Uh, the acting, I think, was good, minus Lewis. I think the character writing for uh, Mickey. It was good, and uh, it makes me want to actually see more of her character going forward. Uh, I do like how both her and Ryan are good people, in the sense where she is in it for saving the kid, and now she's in it for just, she's in deep. <laughs> she's part of the problem. And then Ryan, he's a bit of a creep, <laughs> but I do like how he helped the lady by calling the ambulance instead of just going straight after the kid and he has some brain in in his head somewhere he's nice not someone i'd want to really hang out in real life but i think he he's a good character to bounce off of mickey going forward uh jack he doesn't have much of a presence in here but he does deliver some useful information and uh that's up the scene for the show going forward so i think he was okay as a character nothing special i think the set design was really good in this uh, even with all the browns i think it really gave the feel of an antique shop and i'm interested to see what the props for the artifacts going forward are because that's something where else the was kind of fun about was the artifacts and i don't know if they're going to be like uh, this just looks like a lamp you got a garage sale if it's going to be a bit more unique looking uh, that's something i would look forward to but what we have here is good i think the doll looks creepy does its job the doll was very inconsistent with its power sets and it just could have gotten away with everything it wanted to but it didn't for no real reason father stuff we talked about i'll leave some meat for Ryder, but i'm giving it a five objectively just because I'm not too sure on the era if it's good or not. And I, I think five is okay in a safe zone. Subjectively, like I said in the beginning, this is close to Warehouse 13 in its concept of capturing art, magical artifacts. So I'm naturally intrigued, and in I did buy the physical copy, so I do plan on watching it at some point. So there is a hook in there for me, and I. I am intrigued enough, and for that, I'm I'm giving it a subjective seven. And that'll be it. Right. All right. All right. Um. Yeah. What What did you leave for me? Uh. I'll go with plot first. Um. Plot is I'm gonna guess very MacGuffin heavy going in the show forward because that's revolves around finding magical curse items and I was about to say I was about to say artifacts because. Warehouse 13. Um, but going around and finding cursed items and stuff like that. I can definitely see it being MacGuffin heavy just based around that. Um, as for the first episode, uh, it's balancing a lot because it's not MacGuffin heavy for the majority of it because we're just getting introduced 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 to our uh, 
our cast of characters, uh, Mickey, Ryan, and uh, I'm just going to call him Old Man because I don't fucking remember his name. Correct. Um, and uh, I think they it does a good job of balancing the creepy doll homicidal aspects with the character building. Um, there's a lot of uh, the doll. There's a lot of uh, I think my issues with the plot uh, give damage to characters, which the biggest one being obviously uh, Mickey and Ryan show up, but instead of falling in the ambulance, they just decide to call it a day, which I view as a very big problem. That what that's tied to both plot and character. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it for the plot. I can kind of I get a sense about this being a very episodic show. Um, I'll I'll move on to world building. Uh, the doll really really fucks with the world building, especially at the end because we don't know the limits of her powers, what her powers are. We don't know the level of which control that they have over like their space. Um, we do know that the devil brokered her deal with Lewis at some point. Uh, which results in his untimely demise, uh, which we had a laugh about. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the world building is is kind of falls down in the middle for me. Um, there's potential for them to fix the holes that I see, but going based off the pilot alone, uh, kind of falls down the middle. Uh, characters, uh. I think Mickey and Mary are my favorite, and Mary is unfortunately a one-off. Um, I don't know. Mary progressively gets more homicidal with her character traits, but she's clearly very bitter at the start of the story, and she's also, but she's also very playful as like time has moved on. Uh, I really dislike her dad because her dad's not uh, doesn't really play an active role in this life, and we I don't think. There's a lot of character traits for me to glean from like his situation, uh, outside of the basic one of oh my life had oh my life died again. Um, it comes across as negligence towards Mary, um, which I don't think is the intention on the writer's part, because obviously Mary goes out of the way or he goes out of the way to get Mary a six month old doll or a doll that emerged from a six month old being trapped in an antique store warehouse, whatever. Um. Irene's is very well characterized. Uh, she comes across as a little abrasive in the first scene, but it comes across as very reasonable when we see her later on, when we're transitioning into Mary and the doll uh, being villainous. And I think that's good. I think Irene is very well executed character. Uh, and I think Mickey and Ryan being the core duo i think crimson put it best they're gonna they are good foils for each other they'll be able to play off each other being completely different people um but i think they both have core aspects to them that are likable which being that uh which being that they are both willing to help people mickey has a line of morality in which she's willing to help kids and Ryan has some decent instincts. He doesn't immediately just charge headfirst into dangerous situations. He calls the police when someone's interest or calls nine one one when someone's wounded, uh, which are important character traits to have uh, going forward. And I think they do have some good core aspects to the character. Um, I think objectively, I'm at I'm at a tepid five and a half. Maybe a six, um, which is kind of the opposite of uh, my subjective. Is funny enough the opposite of my uh, of of that in the sense of uh, all this show made me want to do is watch a better version of it, and that's Warehouse Thirteen. Um, I didn't find myself particularly enjoying it, uh, and I think that's mostly due to the might be due to the quality of the experience that we had. But I'm at a four subjectively. And I'm not really all that interested in continuing it. Um, I don't hate it, but I would recommend it to people who are into that stuff. So if this had been, funny enough, something that Crimson didn't know about, I would have, after this, I probably would have introduced it to him. 
<laughs> right up my alley, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. But yeah, so that's that. That's it for me. Sweet. Got some good numbers here. <laughs> uh, anything else before Ryder closes us out? I don't know if I'd call them good numbers. Ah, but they're good numbers. They're good numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Crimson's happy for the average. Okay, Springs. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. My seven might have screwed myself on that. We'll yeah, see. seven <laughs> and a four of high and low. So, yeah. uh, well, uh, with that, shall I read us out, gentlemen? Sure. Yeah. Well, audience, thank you for listening, whether it be Spotify, Anchor, Amazon, Castbox, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Samsung, and iHeartRadio. And if you're on our visual side of scenes, watching our PNG tubers, uh, thank you for that, too. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe everywhere. Tell us how much you hate our opinions or how much you love them. As always, I have been a geeky writer. I'm Crimson Maroon. And I'm Sprinks. And we will catch you next time. Later, everybody. Bye. Toodaloo.